All right, let's continue with this. It's a brief pause for the cause, and we're going over the, this 37th Rastafari Sabbatical study, number 37, in the Hebrew, where Ibrayist, Ukwankwa, Shalak, Lika, Bamarinya, in the Met of Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals of Imperial Majesty, it's Lak Tilkalachu, right? Um, send, uh, you all being sent, send them. You understand? Send them. It, it's speaking about those, those spies, the ten spies who were sent to spy out the promised land. And it also teaches a, 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 a unbelief lesson. It's unbelievable, in a sense, what the Beta Israel did. But what's even more unbelievable is what we find within our own um, Ethiopian World Federation um, history. You understand recent, recent history over the past 40 years. Now that number 40 is interesting too because in the last part of the vid we went over um, Psalm 37. Because we began to see that the number 37 started to stand out. The number 37 started to stand out both in this particular portion and what's contained in therein. The connection with the Ethiopian World Federation, 1937, 3 and 7, once again right there, and how that is connected with the promised land, that land that was promised to our forefathers. You understand to our ancestors. Not just in biblical times, note you. Not only in biblical times, but we're speaking in, in this prophetic revelation time right now. You understand? Now we've noticed that there's been some setbacks with Federation. And there's been a lot of rumors coming out concerning the land, the land grant, or there's no more land and all these sort of things. And it's it's very amazing and interesting how the scriptures, when we study it and we follow the instructions of His Majesty, you understand, concerning the scriptures and the Holy Bible being follow instruction, His Majesty is saying, for my part, I glory in the Bible. And now we who take on His name and His namesake, you understand, as Rastafari, you understand, we have to recognize, whether we like it or not, that we're in the book. You know what I'm saying? Yet, this is a bad example right here. This is a bad example. But yet, in this bad example, there's good news. Because if we don't want to repeat those, those um, errors, we have to learn from them. We have to learn about them. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not under that. But it could be that another generation could wander in the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? Unless there's a, a, a Joshua. You know what I'm saying? And Joshua now becomes a very important part of our story. And it's all based on that faith. It's based on fruition. It's based on trusting Jah. It's based on his law, which is the Torah portion. This is a portion of the law from the book of Numbers. Now we say that all is numbers. I think it's Pi, uh, Pythagorean or Pythagoras who said all is number. But he got that from, of course, the ancient Egyptians and Egyptians being a colony of ancient Ethiopia. And we have a new document, Light and, um, Light and, and Truth, that was written in 1844 by an African-American. And it's a very ethiocentric biblical historical text right here. And we pointed it out previously in a previous vid in the, um, some of the book clubs, some of the new books. Just a little bit of background on it for those um, who desire to know and also for the educational programs that are being developed and need to be developed. Because just from this one portion right here, we linked Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, we've touched on it, the valley of the dry bones, right? Then Psalm 37, you know what I'm saying? Now the number 37, as we said, it equals the oracles of Jah, or the oracles of God. 
You know what I'm saying? And the oracles mean the words, the words of God. And it was speaking of the Torah, speaking of the uh, Tehillim, uh, the book of Psalms, speaking of the um, Nevim or Nebim, the Nebiyat, speaking of the prophets. Now, in our Torah portion of readings and feedings, everyone to note this as well, in the present Torah portion of readings and feedings, we have the prophetical Torah portion as well as the New Testament um, Torah readings. And I would advise ones to consult with the Torah portion, the fullness of the Torah portion, all the readings to read up on that as well. I think I have, I have, I have um, my working copy in the next wing right now. So, so we'll go to that. But you know what I'm speaking of, the, the, the um, free downloadable, um, about 13 or so pages. And if you look at this, there's three sets of reading. We're just dealing with the groundation right now. But as we go through the scriptures and really get into this Torah portion and see how it was connected with um, fear on one part, they were fretting themselves, they were anxietous, um, and basically they were in a state of unbelief. In other words, their blind faith, instead of move, moving forward, forward into true faith, their, their belief not being backed up by an acceptance and a knowledge went back into unbelief. So that in a sense, they retrograded. And this is the reason why Israel lost the promised land. Now, connected with this, right, connected with this particular um, portion is uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 9 to 12, and consider um, verse 19 as well. I'm going to give you a couple of verses, and hopefully we'll go into these in, uh, in, uh, in another part of this particular um, number 37 lecture. Hebrews 13, verses 5 to 6, Psalms 117 and 6, and Job 3 and 25. It's all connected with, first of all, the lack of faith. His Majesty said that, that Ethiopia with faith, courage, and a just cause that even in the 20th century, David would defeat Goliath. Can we still say, even in this 21st century, that Ayanaz Rastafari, with faith, courage, and a just cause, will defeat this Goliath of the 21st century? That's the question. You understand? And until we can confidently say a woe and a main, there is more... Um, work to be done, and the work is to have faith in the one, to trust in the one whom he has sent. And now, uh, important breach in the Federation activities that many ones and ones who say that they are so Federation, Ethiopian World Federation, seem to put Marcus Garvey in a high profile. And if you study the history, you will see that he was antagonistic to the King of Kings, belittled his Imperial Majesty, and generally and, and overall was wrong concerning the Ethiopia issue and his Imperial Majesty issue, although he, he, he reflects some of the prevailing opinions of the time concerning blacks and America and Africa, so forth and so on, on his Imperial Majesty's issue, we should not put him up next and receive him in that sense because he did not receive the King of Kings. As part of our history, yes. You understand? But it's Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. Let me just show you him one more time. You understand? And I'm going to try to show as many times as we can because this is who his majesty had sent. This is the one whom he had sent. So now, if we don't receive the one who he has sent and therefore don't receive the instruction that was given to the one whom he has sent, what will happen to us? is what has already happened to us, and that is basically wandering in the wilderness of North America for 40 years. You understand? For the past 40 years. While the land grant is over there, while we have our own land, our land flowing with milk and honey. You understand? In the prophetic and in the actual potentiality sense. So we put up the video concerning colonialization and the Chinese and others going there farming, and we look at that, so on and so on. But, what, 
But that's those giants. You understand these giant corporations? Those are giants in the land, and that's what we learn in this particular portion, chapter 13 to chapter 15 of the book of Numbers. But now when we look at 3 and 7, right? 3 and 7 equals 10 equals 1, right? 3 and 7. So let's, let's first of all deal with 3. Let's deal with the number 3. The number three in biblical numbers signifies union, approval, approbation, coordination, perfection, resurrection, the triangle as well as the triunity or shalase, salus, shalus, kedus, the mystery of God, right? And it's the union, number three is the union of one and two, both in Scripturally speaking, both in the positive sense as well as the negative sense. Like in Revelation, there's an evil trinity, you understand, which is against the, the first power of the trinity, you understand, or our Father, his majesty, and his Christ, you understand. So the number three, it signifies all of these things, but on the union level, it signifies the union of one, and two. You understand? Of one and two. Now, what about seven? Seven is a well known biblical, some say holy number, the number seven. But according to biblical numbers, it's a number of fullness, the pleroma, the mulat. It's a number of fullness, completeness. You understand? Innumerable. The idea is also it's a sense of innumerability. That means not even numberable because it's the series is complete. We have to recognize that the series is complete in seven. And now seven also is the Shiva or the Shiva. Shiva or Shiva is or Shiva, but the Shiva is seven. You understand? And the seven means an oath. And it's implicit that it's a covenant type of an oath. You understand? It's a word. It's a word agreement. You understand? It is word powered. It is word activated. You understand? Just like our blessings are word activated because of that covenant, because of that fullness, because of that completeness, and that sense of the innumerability of it is because it is complete in series, is complete in seven. Now, three and seven added together. From the 37, which equals the oracles or the words of Jah, the words of God, equals 10. Now, what about 10? What does 10 signify? And we found this to be very interesting when we were studying this, um, this biblical numbers and prophetic numbers in, in the context of this Rastafari sabbatical study in Torah portion, that 10 equals testimony, law, and responsibility. Testimony, law, and responsibility is signified in the number 10. Very, very interesting because when you understand the minyam too, the minyam, which is necessary in the Hebraic and Judaic communities, you understand, in order to form almost like a, a, a board or a committee, you need 10, 10 men of good standing. So that number 10 in that sense of responsibility, because those ten take that responsibility for the rest of the community in that sense. So ten equals testimony, and ten equals law, and ten equals response ability. That means the ability to respond. Now, this is the number is used representing man. This number ten, like the ten sephirot in the Kabbalistic tree of life, right, the Etz Ha'ayim, the number 10, it represents man, but man who is under the law. Man who is not an in-law, but he is under the law. Some say it's a one and a womb and a cipher. It's a one and a matrix, right? So this symbolizes and represents man who is under the law, but 10 also also represents the accuser, you understand, because the accuser uses this number to accuse man, the accuser, the casey, 
Sayyid on Diablos uses this number 10 and he uses the law to accuse man. You understand? This is why um, the Old Testament Jew, apart from the Moshiach, you understand, failed to inherit the blessing. You understand? It's the same reason why we, apart from His Majesty's teaching and His Christ, also for 40 years have failed to enter into this promised land. You understand? So now, this is interesting concerning number 10. Because the accuser uses that number, which signifies testimony, law, and responsibility, to accuse man. Now, this brings us to one. Now, notice how this all comes down, that the, that the, the, the two digits, you, you round it down, you break it down, and then you bring it to a whole number. Then you bring that number down to a single number because there's no number really higher than nine according to the basic principle, right? And all is under 81, you know what I'm saying? And the last known time of His Majesty is at the age, they say, of 81, which is significant according to the secrets that are hiding in plain sight. But um, one equals unity. One equals unity. This unity is independence. This unity is the point. This is what the number, biblical meaning of this number one has been defined as. But we found this definition most interesting, that this also equals the head. And we know what the head is, the ras. This one, this unity equals the head. This independence is the point, the head. And then in parentheses, they had in one particular biblical numbers, meaning a biblical number study that we consulted, that this head, this ras, is male. This ras is male. Then I began to think about this one man. This is like that Neo, that idea in the Matrix movie, that new man, that, that unity that is Tawahido, this oneness, right, this ras. So it's interesting that number 37 and these scriptures right here, just as an example, an a easy referential example, Ezekiel speaks to what's going wrong amongst so-called the lost sheeple and how the divine way to get it right. And number 37, Psalm 37, it speaks to the land grant. You understand? It speaks to overcoming all of the obstacles and the wickedness, but all of this is talking to the faith now moving towards fruition. You see, when they wandered, it's because they wandered away from faith and from belief into unbelief. Those people, they had belief at one time. But as they was going through the wilderness discipline, you know what I'm saying, they started to want to go back to Egypt. They started to want to go back. It's like the civil rights of all the experience, then they want to go back down into captivity, renegotiate the terms of their enslavement, not to come out. It's a very interesting kind of connection. So we find that this 37, there's a certain resonance here, you understand, as we just use this as a, an example, you understand, there's a certain resonance because all of this basically speaks towards unity. Anything short of unity is going to cause division. You know, and we see that when the spies came back in this Torah portion, they were not, they were not united in their testimonies. Ten were. Let's remember this. There were 12 spies or 12 scouts. And two came back and brought a faithful witness. Let's overstand that. But ten came back and brought an evil report. And that evil report, it discouraged, some say, nearly two million people from going into that promised land. You understand? Because of fear, because of fretting, you understand? Because of basically lack of faith. You understand? And they had fallen into unbelief. And when you fall into unbelief, it's tantamount to denial. It's basically denial. You understand? You are denying service to God's word in your head, in your heart, in your life, and therefore God 
is denying that access into your blessing or the promise. And this is what happened with the Beit Israel in this particular Torah portion. Alak to Lekalachu, or in the Hebrew, Shalak Lika. And we're going to get into some more of that word of feet. So stay tuned, brothers and sisters. More to come, Yah willing. Shalom. Rastafari. Send that salam. Shabbat shalom.